Hello again people, uh, Zach here again today, and um, this video is probably going to be a little bit short. Um, I'm, it's mostly going to be about um, what time physically is, um, as opposed to being like phil philosophically uh, speaking. Um, and so, uh, just to recap on and what the philosophical explanation of this is, um, time as how we observe it is just a measurement of the relative becoming of one thing with respect to another. Um, and the, the, the term becoming here is actually just referring to like the perpetual motion slash change of things, like whether it be vibration, uh, oscillation, or if you're talking about like a transition from one state to another, um, everything is always becoming something else. Um, nothing is ever in stasis. Um, and so that's, that's the philosophical explanation for what time is. Um, but if you want to ask about what it is physically speaking, um, in, in layman's terms, uh, it is the relative rate of emission and collection of electromagnetic radiation. Um, that's what it is. And, and this makes a lot more sense if you um, understand like energy is quantized um, and, and how it's quantized. Um, Planck's equations, um, which are used to describe the electromagnetic spectrum, um, in regards to uh, temperature, like how um, how much electromagnetic radiation is stimulated with respect to temperature for black bodies, um, which actually goes into something like the ultraviolet catastrophe and stuff. Um, and the Rayleigh genes equation was like the original one we used, which could um, explain infrared. But um, once you get to like the ultraviolet, things just go haywire and energy goes to infinity. Um, but anyway, um, the if you look at spectrographs and stuff, one of the things that we realized early on after we figured that stuff out was that um, there are discrete energy levels. Like there is like a certain point that once you get up to it, it's like you jump. And um, so this is like where we get like these different energy levels that are inside of electrons. Like if you put this so much energy into it, you can raise an electron into a higher energy state as it drops back down and emits two photons, uh, stuff like that. But the um, the thing that you don't hear explicitly stated, which is kind of implied uh, through general relativity, is that the, the rate of emission and collection of electromagnetic radiation is directly per correlated to the gravitational potential. Um, so if, you, if you're like uh, near a large mass, the rate at which that's happening is going to be a lot slower than if you're um, way out in the vacuum of space. And, um, and our perception of that, um, our perception of that relative difference is... Um, an increase or a decrease in the speed of time. Like for some reason, um, people who are up in like spaceships like that, um, the the time is flowing quicker for them than it is down here on Earth. Um, that said, um, what this means is that the rate of emission and collection um, is more or less equivalent to a rate of becoming. So that's that's the physical explanation of the philosophical. Um, but there's, an, there's another thing as well, um, which I had realized, and I, I tried to explain this to someone before um, in one of the arguments that I, I talked about in previous videos as well. Um, if, you, if you assert that there's a constant speed of light, um, you literally have to warp time itself to explain the observation of changing clock rate. Um, that's the only way you can explain it. And when you get to things like um, gravitational lensing, the only way that you can explain gravitational lensing is by warping space. Um, and, and, and the explanation for that, like why you'd have to warp space in order to explain gravitational lensing is because if light is moving at a constant speed um, in a vacuum, the only way that you can refract light is if space itself is curving. Um, but the thing is, like, space and time are not things. Like, they're, they're measurements. Um, space is not a thing. It's, it's a nothing. It's just why it's infinite and continuous. Um, being is a thing. Um, if you're talking about, like, fields, fields are things. Um, of course, they exist in time. They don't exist in space, which is why they're not bounded by forms. It's why two things that are distances from each other can interact. Um, it has nothing to do with space. It has to do with um, fields, um, which is just a mathematical description of being. Um, so... If you assume there's a constant speed of light, you have to warp time and space in order to make general relativity work. And by the way, this isn't a new idea of mine. Um, as a matter of fact, after I discovered this, I come to find out, some of Einstein's earlier work actually stated this, that the speed of light varies based on the gravitational potential. But that fact is just kind of like completely ignored nowadays. And um, the and it's not to say 
that it works entirely different because um, one of the benefits that we get from asserting that the speed of light is a constant is that you can use the mathematics to perform all of these different calculations. Um, but you have to understand that, yes, while in mathematically, like we can do that, um, that if you assert that it's a constant, that because of all of the way that these things are functionally related, we can derive these other things from that. You have to understand that physically speaking, it is not constant. Um, it varies with gravitational potential, and this is one of the reasons why you know there's a relationship between space and uh, in time. Is because there's a relationship between gravitational potential and electromagnetic radiation. Um, so this is red flags here because now what you're talking about is an electric universe, um, which is um, what a lot of um, people have been proposing nowadays, um, and not a lot of people have, have like completely figured out. Well, I don't think anyone's actually completely figured out um, what the exact relationship is between gravitational potential and electricity. And it may be like it's lopsided. Like, I think, like, the rate of... Um, the rate at which um, magnetic uh, flux changes is, like, different from the rate at which um, permittivity changes or something like that. I don't know. Um, it's not my specialty. I, I just kind of focus more on the uh, abstract details and getting too far into the mathematics. Um, I mean, if, if I tried to learn every single thing on the Earth, I would, I would never get anywhere in life. Um, but anyway, um, talking about the existence of uh, black holes, because uh, black holes were like one particular solution to general relativity. Uh, but one thing I really dislike about the idea of a black hole is... Um, That we, that we can't really definitively observe them in nature. I mean, they, they say that we've taken pictures of, um, of black holes, but from what I understand, the only picture that we have was actually, like, stitched together by, like, a hundred-something telescopes taking pictures of something that was way, way outside their range and then heavily processed, and then the processed data was, like, composited and uh, divided into two different compositions, which are given to, like, two different teams who constructed two different images who then composed their images back together in order to create a single pixel that was, or, like, a tenth of a pixel that was bloated up to, like, a full, huge resolution. Um... That's the the second you start seeing something like that, and you're just like, "Come on, people!" Um, but if we were to humor the idea that they could exist, um, I, I would think that if you get to the point where you have singularity, um, where something becomes that dense, um, the being of the thing would overtake the becoming of the thing, um, and so. Once you get past the event horizon, um, time inside of a black hole should essentially stop because there's no becoming anymore. Like it's the inertia is overtaking it so far that it can't become anything anymore. So there's no emission of radiation or collection of radiation, so to speak. It's just it's almost like time is completely halted. Um, and um, this is kind of like an alternative. Um, to a lot of uh, some of the other ideas about black holes, like how time becomes space, or just, just like ridiculous things like that, because like I said, time and space are two completely different things. Um, but this is like what happens if you take things to the most extreme conditions. Um, you've basically you, you've pushed it so far that it becomes all uh, being and no becoming. But anyway, um, and, and on the topic of black holes, I just I just want to um, shout out to um, I think his name is uh, Doctor Robitaille. Um, He's a um, an MRI imaging expert who's discovered some problems with like black body radiation, um, like the way the some of the laws that we have that describe these things. And he has a YouTube series. Um, I'll, I'll probably link that in the comments of uh, this video. Um, but he also talks about um, the problems with the black hole um, image, the way that's presented, and uh, even just like physically speaking, even if we could. Um, even if some, we did have the power to take pictures of um, of something that of a black hole that was close enough to us, I mean, like from what I understand, any time we see like planets that are um, orbiting around a central point where there doesn't appear to be anything there, um, we just kind of assume that there's a heavy invisible mass there instead of like assuming that they could have been orbiting around each other 
or that there couldn't have been uh, something like a dense mass of dark energy or something. I mean, there, there's no... Th like I said, there's no definitive way to um, figure out if what we're looking at and what we think it is is what we think it is. And um, anyway, uh, I, I think I'll cut off the video around here because, like I said, this is going to be a rather short video. I was just wanted to talking about what like the 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 physics of it is because I think when you get into the philosophical aspects of it, some people just like it goes over their heads and they don't really see how everything is connecting together and where this all these ideas stem from. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching.